Picture a seasoned sailor on turbulent waters, navigating through the raging storm with an unfazed demeanor, calmly adjusting the sails. That sailor isn't devoid of fear, rather, he has developed a certain resilience, an innate ability to dance with the tempest. This vision symbolizes our lives, filled with uncertainties, crises, and stormy days. Yet, just as the sailor remains steadfast, you too have the capacity to cultivate an unwavering spirit rooted in resilience. Resilience, as its Latin origin suggests, means to jump back or rebound. It is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, adapt well to change and keep going in the face of adversity. It's the metaphorical anchor that keeps the sailor steady amidst the storm. For some, resilience seems innate as if they were born with a natural ability to withstand life's tumultuous tides. For others, it appears to be a learned craft, meticulously honed over years of experience. Yet, regardless of its origin, one cannot understate its value. In a rapidly changing world marked by chaos and unpredictability, resilience is not just beneficial, it's vital. It's the dividing line between those who crumble under pressure and those who rise above it. But how does one cultivate this profound quality? Can the principles of ancient philosophy, seemingly distant and unrelated to our modern lives, guide us in developing unwavering resilience? Enter Stoicism, an ancient philosophy for a modern problem. Stoicism, birthed in the vibrant forums of ancient Greece and nurtured in the corridors of Roman power, is more than just a philosophy, it's a way of life. Rooted deeply in understanding the human condition, Stoicism teaches acceptance of things we can't change and focuses on improving what we can control, our actions, beliefs, and feelings. Stoicism is often misconceived as a teaching of emotional suppression, a school for the heartless. In reality, it advocates for a better understanding of our emotions, directing them in ways that are in alignment with reason and virtue. Think of it not as the absence of emotion, but as emotional intelligence in its highest form. To the Stoics, every challenge presents an opportunity to practice virtue. Every setback is a lesson in wisdom, and every joy is to be enjoyed, but not overly attached to. They understood, perhaps more deeply than many of us today, the transient nature of existence and the futility of resisting the inevitable. If resilience is the anchor, Stoicism is the craft of forging it. The very principles Stoicism embodies, acceptance, understanding, emotional detachment, and the pursuit of virtue are the bedrock of resilience. In a world of fleeting pleasures and mounting challenges, Stoicism serves as a compass. It steers us away from the superficial and directs us towards the profound. Where others see calamity, a Stoic sees an opportunity for growth. When faced with adversity, a Stoic doesn't ask, why me? But rather, what lesson is life teaching me? The Stoic approach to life's trials and tribulations isn't about enduring in silent misery, but rather navigating through them with grace, wisdom, and inner peace. It's about understanding that while we cannot control the storms of life, we can control our reactions to them. Modern society is flooded with self-help books, motivational speakers, and life coaches offering a plethora of strategies to build mental strength. While many are undoubtedly valuable, few have stood the test of time as Stoicism has. For over two millennia, Stoicism has been a beacon for statesmen, scholars, athletes, and everyday individuals alike. Its enduring relevance underscores its profound insights into human nature and the art of living. The teachings of this profound philosophy remind us of the impermanence of life, urging us to focus on what truly matters, our character, our actions, and our legacy. Imagine harnessing the power of stoic wisdom to cultivate resilience. Picture yourself facing life's fiercest storms with a tranquil mind, seeing obstacles not as impediments, but as opportunities to grow stronger. As we delve deeper into the Stoic principles in this journey, you'll unearth the tools to construct an indomitable spirit fortified by wisdom and powered by virtue. 
So, are you ready to navigate the tumultuous waters of life with the steady hand of a seasoned sailor? The voyage into the heart of stoic resilience begins now. Let's go beneath the surface and unearth the core elements of this invaluable attribute without which even the most seasoned sailor is but a ship lost at sea. Resilience is often likened to a sort of emotional elasticity, the ability to snap back to form after being stretched, twisted or bent by life's challenges. But such an analogy might be limiting because it implies a return to an original state. True resilience is not just about bouncing back, it's about bouncing forward. It's about integrating the experience into your life, transforming adversity into a catalyst for growth. You don't revert to your original shape, you take a new form, more robust and more intricate than before. In our hyper-connected, always-on world, the cacophony of life's demands can be overwhelming. Social pressures, professional challenges, personal struggles, the modern landscape often feels like a maze with hurdles at every turn. Add to this the complexities of global issues like pandemics, social unrest, and climate change. And you'll find that resilience is no longer just an admirable trait, it's a necessity. It's the psychological armor that protects us, the emotional intelligence that guides us, and the spiritual wisdom that sustains us. From a psychological perspective, resilience isn't merely the absence of mental health symptoms or disorders, it's the presence of positive traits and coping mechanisms. Psychologists have identified several key components of resilience, including self-awareness, self-regulation, optimism, mental agility, and strong social connections. Studies have even shown that these traits can be developed and enhanced through targeted interventions, defying the notion that resilience is purely an innate trait you either have or don't have. When you turn to philosophy, you find an enriching array of perspectives on resilience. While we are focusing on Stoicism in this discussion, it's worth noting that many philosophical traditions offer wisdom on cultivating resilience. Eastern philosophies like Buddhism teach the concept of non-attachment, which resonates strongly with the Stoic ideal of emotional detachment. Existentialism, on the other hand, presents life's absurdities and hardships as prerequisites for authentic living. These philosophies, in their unique ways, contribute to a holistic understanding of resilience. The narratives of resilience are woven into the tapestry of human history. Take, for instance, Nelson Mandela, who emerged from 27 years of imprisonment with an unbroken spirit and a vision for a united South Africa. His resilience transformed not just his life, but the fate of a nation. Or let's go back a bit further in time to the Roman philosopher king Marcus Aurelius, who governed an empire in turmoil while penning his meditations, which stand as a testimony to resilience and stoic philosophy. He faced wars, plagues and political betrayal, yet his writings reflect an indomitable spirit committed to virtue and wisdom. Finally, let's not overlook everyday resilience. The single parent juggling multiple jobs to provide for their family, the cancer survivor who turns their journey into an advocacy for healthcare, or even the college student overcoming failure to excel in their studies. These are the unsung heroes, the quiet testament to the power and ubiquity of resilience. As we delve into the stoic principles that follow, you'll notice that each one provides a unique lens to understand and cultivate resilience. Whether you're steering a nation, leading a household, or charting the course of your personal development, these principles offer a robust framework to navigate the complexities of modern life. They give us the tools to not just endure the storm, but to master it, to turn trials into triumphs, and to transform adversity into advantage. As we progress through each Stoic principle in the subsequent sections, 
These foundational insights into resilience will serve as our guide, enriching our journey towards mental strength and emotional equanimity. The first Stoic principle we'll explore is the foundational concept of discerning what is within your control from what is not. If you've ever caught yourself tangled in worry about the economy, the political landscape, or even other people's opinions of you, this principle can serve as your liberating compass. The Stoic philosophers, notably Epictetus, emphasized the profound but simple idea that our lives are primarily affected not by what happens to us, but by how we respond to what happens to us. Imagine your life as a canvas. While you don't get to choose all the colors, some are handed to you by fate, you do have the paintbrush in your hand. You are the artist of your composition. The Stoics argued that our internal responses, our judgments, choices and actions are solely ours to govern. This idea could be one of the most liberating concepts you'll ever come across. When you truly grasp this, you unload an enormous burden of unnecessary stress and anxiety. You free yourself from the enslaving chains of external events and opinions. You become, in a very real sense, the master of your own life. Stoicism teaches what's often called the dichotomy of control. Simply put, some things are up to us and others are not. Things like our opinions, desires, aversions and actions are within our control because they are subject to our direct influence. External events, the weather, the stock market, other people's behavior reside outside our realm of control. Here are some practical tips to differentiate between what's within your control and what's not. Ask the right questions. Whenever you find yourself anxious or upset, ask yourself, is this something I can control? If yes, focus your energy there. If not, then practice letting go. Reality testing. Before investing emotional energy into something, test its controllability. Try to influence it. If you find that you can't, it probably lies outside your control. The so what technique. When fretting about something, ask yourself, so what if this happens? Often you'll realize that even if the undesirable occurs, it's not the end of the world, freeing you to focus on how you will respond. Be mindful. Practicing mindfulness can improve your awareness of your thoughts and feelings, helping you catch yourself before you become emotionally entangled with things outside your control. Now, it's time to put this concept into practice. Take a piece of paper or open a note on your device and draw two columns. Label one as within my control and the other as outside my control. Take a moment to think about the various aspects of your life, your career, relationships, health and even your dreams and fears. Start populating each column with things that fall under them. For example, you can control your work ethic, but you can't control job market conditions. You can control how loving and understanding you are in a relationship, but you can't control how someone feels about you. This exercise is an eye-opener. It's like unloading the heavy rocks from your backpack during a hike, making your journey through life that much easier and more enjoyable. So the next time you find yourself fretting over a negative review at work or worrying about a future event, return to this first principle of stoicism. Ask yourself what you can control, focus your energy there, and let go of the rest. This simple act can be a game changer, unshackling you from unnecessary burdens and gifting you the freedom to engage with life more fully and authentically. Understanding what is within your control is more than a stoic principle. It's a transformative life skill. It's your first step towards genuine resilience and enduring mental strength. As we continue our philosophical expedition, the next port of call is the stoic principle of cultivating apathy or emotional detachment. Now, if the word apathy immediately sets off alarms in your head, 
conjuring images of emotionless robots or cold-hearted individuals, let's set the record straight right away. In the Stoic lexicon, apathy doesn't mean the absence of emotion, but rather signifies a disciplined management of emotional responses. It teaches us to prevent our feelings from holding us hostage and clouding our judgment. Stoicism argues that our emotions are largely the products of our judgments and beliefs. Change the judgment, and the emotion changes along with it. For example, if someone cuts you off in traffic, and your immediate judgment is that they've disrespected you, you'll likely feel angry. But if your judgment shifts to a belief that they might be rushing to the hospital, or didn't even see you, the emotional grip loosens. Emotional detachment in the Stoic sense means giving yourself the gift of perspective, offering a mental buffer that allows you to think clearly and act wisely, even in the heat of the moment. The utility of emotional detachment in real-world scenarios. Consider the case of professional athletes who miss a critical shot or lose an important match. Rather than wallowing in self-pity or letting anger hijack their performance, they deploy emotional detachment to learn from their mistakes and prepare for the next opportunity. Their resilience, evident in their ability to bounce back, is fortified by their stoic emotional detachment. Or take a look at first responders like firefighters or medical professionals. In high-stakes situations where lives hang in the balance, these individuals practice a form of emotional detachment that allows them to think and act quickly without being paralyzed by their feelings. We can even see this principle applied in the corporate world. Good leaders often have to make tough, unpopular decisions. Emotional detachment allows them to weigh the pros and cons dispassionately and opt for the choice that, although difficult, serves the greater good. Now, let's transform this intellectual understanding into a living practice. We'll do a brief guided meditation exercise, but if you prefer journaling, you can adapt it accordingly. Meditation. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to center yourself. Imagine a scenario where you usually get emotionally triggered. It could be a confrontational conversation, a stressful work situation, or even hearing a piece of news that usually upsets you. Visualize yourself in that scenario, but picture a transparent shield around you. This shield represents your newfound stoic detachment. As the triggering event unfolds, imagine your emotions hitting the shield and dissipating. They can't touch you. You observe them but don't engage. Take a moment to experience this detachment, the freedom it brings and the clarity it offers. When you are ready, open your eyes and take a few more deep breaths. Journaling. Write down a recent event that triggered a strong emotional response in you. Describe in detail what judgments or beliefs fueled these emotions. Now reframe these judgments or beliefs in a way that loosens the emotional grip. Write down how this new perspective changes your emotional response and how you would act differently in a similar future scenario. By mastering the stoic art of emotional detachment, you arm yourself with an invaluable tool for resilience this isn't about muting your emotional life, but about harmonizing it. It's like tuning an instrument. You still play the music, but the notes are clearer, more precise, and much more in control. Cultivating apathy or emotional detachment in the stoic sense is not about nullifying emotions, but refining them. It allows us to engage with life not as slaves to our feelings, but as masters of them. A life ruled by unexamined emotions is a ship tossed aimlessly by the sea, but with the stoic compass of emotional detachment, we find our bearings and set a course that aligns with our deepest values and highest aspirations. Our next anchoring point in this stoic odyssey is the paramount importance of virtue and inner character. This principle is quite divergent from many modern societal norms that often prioritize external achievements like wealth, status, or physical beauty. Let's unfold this idea and see how it becomes an indispensable pillar for constructing an edifice of mental resilience. In Stoic philosophy, 
Virtues like wisdom, courage, justice, and self-discipline are considered the highest goods. They are not just abstract moralistic ideals. They are pragmatic tools for living a well-tempered life. Stoics believe that the cultivation of these virtues is the path to eudaimonia, often translated as flourishing or blessedness. In a way, they provide a moral compass, a way to navigate life's complexities. Think about it. If your primary focus is on developing inner virtues, your self-worth is far less susceptible to the volatile winds of external circumstances. You're not perturbed by market downturns, shifts in social opinion, or even personal losses to the same extent that someone would be whose sense of value is tied to these external variables. The commitment to personal virtue and inner character acts as a psychological fortress. Why? Because while the world around you is in constant flux, your virtues can be steadfast. No one can take away your integrity, your compassion or your wisdom. They are yours and they are unassailable. Let's consider a practical example. Imagine you're a salesperson and your value is tied solely to meeting quotas or outperforming colleagues. What happens when the economy tanks or when a new sales strategy fails? Your self-esteem crumbles. However, if you prioritize virtues such as diligence, integrity and good service, a bad month doesn't devastate you. You have the resilience to adapt, learn and persist. Another example can be found in the realms of academia or the arts. Those who tie their entire identity to awards, recognitions or the praise of others often find themselves in an emotional roller coaster. On the flip side, valuing virtues like creativity, dedication and the pursuit of truth or beauty makes you resilient against the tide of public opinion or the judgment of critics. Moreover, focusing on internal virtues realigns your motivation. You're not striving for a virtuous life because it's a ticket to external rewards. You strive for it because it is the reward. And this self-sustaining cycle of motivation only adds to your mental resilience, making you not only less susceptible to life's slings and arrows, but also giving you a continuous source of fuel to overcome them. Now let's make this principle actionable with a simple exercise. Take out your journal or open a note-taking app and list down the four cardinal stoic virtues. Wisdom, courage, justice, temperance. Next, think about your life experiences in the past month. Write down instances where you exhibited these virtues, no matter how small. Also, jot down opportunities where you could have shown these virtues but missed out. This dual approach serves two purposes. It reinforces the positive behavior, while gently reminding you of areas for growth. Finally, set some achievable goals to focus on these virtues in the month ahead. Think of them as your personal KPIs, key performance indicators, except they measure the quality of your character rather than external achievements. While the world often urges you to seek happiness in external possessions or social validation, Stoicism invites you to find it in the sanctuary of your inner world. And in doing so, you build a citadel of resilience that no external force can easily breach. The principle of valuing virtue forms the heart and soul of Stoic philosophy and is key to developing unparalleled mental resilience. By turning your focus inwards on attributes entirely within your control, you construct a reliable, robust core that holds steadfast, even when the world around you is in disarray. It's not an exaggeration to say that, for a Stoic, virtue isn't just its own reward. It's the cornerstone of a resilient, flourishing life. As we continue our exploration of Stoic principles that cultivate mental strength, we arrive at an idea that can both sober and liberate us, the acceptance of impermanence. 
While this concept may appear somber, Stoicism uses it not as a grim reminder, but as a liberating truth. One that adds value to our existence and makes us resilient in the face of life's inevitable changes. The Stoic Embrace of Impermanence One of the most salient features of Stoicism is its willingness to engage with life as it is, not as we wish it to be. And life, in its purest essence, is a dance of constant change. Nothing remains static, be it good or bad. Understanding this transitory nature allows us to navigate life's ups and downs with a degree of equanimity. Impermanence is not a concept limited to Stoicism, of course. It's an idea that resonates through various philosophies and religions, from Buddhism to existentialism. But Stoicism takes a pragmatic approach, encouraging us to use this understanding as a tool for resilience. If you know things are bound to change, you are better prepared to deal with adversity when it comes knocking. Conversely, this awareness also prevents us from becoming overly attached to fleeting joys, helping to mitigate the inevitable suffering that comes from loss or change. One of the most stirring quotes that touch upon this concept comes from Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor. In his meditations he writes, Time is like a river made up of the events which happen, and a violent stream, for as soon as a thing has been seen, it is carried away, and another comes in its place, and this will be carried away too. This quote encapsulates the Stoic view of life's fleeting nature, likening it to a river, where each moment is quickly succeeded by the next. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that both our joys and sorrows are temporary, urging us to adopt a balanced attitude that helps us deal with life's unpredictable currents. Imagine the resilience of someone who understands the impermanence of their struggles, who can see beyond the immediate pain or challenge and grasp its temporary nature. This individual is not easily faced by setbacks because they understand that just as good times don't last, neither do the bad ones. Take for instance people who have lost their jobs only to find a greater calling in the emptiness that follows. Or think about relationships that end, making room for self-growth or new partnerships that bring more joy and fulfillment. Even in the most distressing scenarios, like dealing with illness or the loss of a loved one, accepting impermanence can offer a form of solace, reminding us that our grief too shall pass, and with time healing becomes possible. To embed this stoic wisdom into your own life, let's engage in a reflective exercise. This can be done through journaling or meditative contemplation, whichever suits you best. List three things or experiences that brought you immense joy or happiness. Reflect on their transitory nature. How did you feel when they were over? How did you cope? List three challenges or hardships you faced. Reflect on how they changed or evolved over time. Were you able to see their impermanence while you were going through them? Lastly, imagine your life one year from now. What are some things that are essential to you today that may change? How does thinking about their impermanence make you feel? Does it empower you to appreciate them more? Or perhaps to not cling to them too tightly? The Stoic principle of accepting impermanence offers us a lens through which we can view the world as it is, forever changing. In doing so, it equips us with the mental tools to face life's inevitable ups and downs, making us stronger and more resilient in the process. Embracing the concept of impermanence is like mastering the art of surfing on the waves of change. Each wave has its rise and fall, its own dangers and thrills, but the adept surfer rides them all with the same composed skill, adapting to each one's unique nature. Through the stoic lens, accepting life's impermanent nature allows us to become skilled surfers, capable of riding high on the waves of joy and skillfully navigating the lows of adversity, all while maintaining our inner equilibrium. In our ongoing journey through Stoic principles that cultivate mental fortitude, we arrive at an especially potent idea, 
the practice of objective representation. This principle invites us to see the world through a lens devoid of personal biases, interpretations, or emotional charges. At first glance, it might seem like a formidable task, but as we'll explore, it's a pathway to unparalleled resilience and a richly rewarding life. The Stoics believed that many of our troubles stem not from events themselves, but from our judgments about those events. Epictetus famously said, Men are disturbed not by things, but by the view which they take of them. And he was on to something that modern psychology also emphasizes. Our thoughts shape our emotional state. Objective representation is a way to adjust the lens through which we perceive reality. It's about peeling away the layers of subjective interpretation to see the bare facts. Let's say you lost your job. The objective fact is that you are now unemployed, which has certain financial and logistical implications. However, labeling this event as disastrous, humiliating, or unfair adds a subjective weight that can lead to emotional suffering and paralysis. Seeing things objectively can have a profound impact on your ability to cope with life's challenges. Consider a relationship breakup. Viewed through a subjective lens, it could be a catastrophe, a blow to your self-esteem, or an emotional death sentence. But viewed objectively, it's a change in your relationship status, indicating that the partnership was not beneficial for one or both parties. This objective framing allows you to analyze the situation rationally, learn from it, and even find opportunities for personal growth or a better relationship down the line. Another example is criticism. If your boss or a friend criticizes you, it's easy to feel attacked or demeaned. However, through the lens of objective representation, you can see this feedback simply as data, information that can help you improve. Once you detach your emotions from the criticism, it becomes a tool for growth rather than a weapon that wounds your self-esteem. Practical tips for objective representation. Pause before you react. When confronted with a situation that triggers strong emotions, take a moment to breathe and distance yourself from your initial reactions. This small pause can provide the necessary gap to introduce objectivity. Ask questions. Interrogate your own thoughts. Is this an objective fact or is it an interpretation? Are you adding emotional flavor to the situation? Questioning helps you separate facts from assumptions. Use third-person language. Sometimes rephrasing the situation as if it's happening to someone else can offer an objective perspective. Instead of saying, why did this happen to me, ask, what happened and what are its implications? Consult trusted friends. Sometimes our biases are so ingrained that we can't see beyond them. A trusted impartial friend can help you see the objective reality you might be overlooking. As a hands-on exercise to develop the skill, I'd encourage you to keep a stoic journal. Every evening, write down situations where you felt strong emotions, anger, sadness, overwhelming joy, and dissect those situations objectively. Strip away the emotional language and see what you're left with. This act alone can be incredibly liberating and eye-opening. Objective representation is a Stoic's scalpel for cutting away the excess tissue of subjective interpretations, leaving behind the clean wound of reality that can heal more effectively. By developing the habit of seeing life's events as they truly are, you not only become more resilient, but also unlock a deeper understanding of the world and yourself. In embracing objective representation, you arm yourself with one of the most potent psychological tools available to mankind. You create a mental stronghold that is hard to assail. It provides a form of mental agility that allows you to duck under the swinging mace of emotional triggers and parry the stabbing sword of negative self-talk. By seeing the world as it is, not as you fear or wish it to be, you gain a stoic calm that can withstand even the harshest storms life may brew. Now we delve into a principle that binds these teachings into a tangible action plan, the concept of willful endurance. This isn't just about surviving hardships, 
It's about embracing them as classrooms for character development and personal growth. The Stoics didn't shy away from the world's difficulties. Rather, they greeted them as opportunities to apply their philosophy and grow stronger. Challenges, according to Stoicism, aren't just inevitable. They are necessary for the expansion of the soul. Seneca writes, Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Willful endurance is not passive resignation, but an active embracing of what is happening. It's standing in the eye of the storm and saying, teach me. This act of voluntary acceptance transforms mere survival into a sort of alchemy, where base hardships can be transmuted into golden lessons. Remember that challenges aren't specific to certain people. They're a universal feature of human life. What differentiates us is not whether we encounter difficulties, but how we approach them. A quick glance through history, or even your immediate social circle, will show how enduring adversity, especially when embraced willfully, can serve as a turning point in people's lives. Consider figures like Nelson Mandela, who endured 27 years in prison and emerged not with vengeance, but with a vision for unity and reconciliation. His imprisonment wasn't just time served, it was a period of intense intellectual and spiritual growth. Another example could be of J.K. Rowling, who faced numerous rejections and personal struggles, including depression, before publishing her Harry Potter series. Her story is not just one of eventual success, but of the growth and refinement that came through her challenges. Redefine your relationship with challenges. Instead of seeing them as problems, regard them as opportunities. Change the narrative from why is this happening to me, to what can this teach me? Develop a stoic ritual. Whenever you face a challenging situation, take a few deep breaths and remind yourself of stoic principles. You can even have a favorite stoic quote handy as a touchstone to center your thoughts. Practice perspective shifting. In the middle of a difficulty, Take a moment to think of a past challenge that you successfully navigated. This temporal shift can often lessen the emotional charge and allow you to apply willful endurance more effectively. Learn to pivot. Part of enduring willfully is recognizing when to change course. Sometimes resilience involves adaptation, and the willingness to pivot can be a result of an open, enduring mindset. the stoic principle of willful endurance imbues us with a sort of philosophical resilience that goes beyond mere coping mechanisms. It empowers us to see difficulties as fertile ground for inner growth and transformation. We cease to be victims of circumstance and become students of life, ever eager to learn, adapt, and thrive. When you engage with life through the lens of willful endurance, each challenge becomes a sculptor's chisel striking away at the marble that encases your inner potential. The blows may seem harsh, and at times you may feel close to breaking, but it's through such experiences that the most beautiful and enduring works of art, be it a sculpted stone or a resilient human spirit, are crafted. We've journeyed through various stoic principles that can fortify our individual souls, leading us to become more resilient beings. However, Stoicism is not merely a personal toolkit for mental toughness. Its wisdom extends beyond the boundaries of the self, fostering an ethic of community and universal interconnectedness. It is this community-focused dimension that we'll explore in our final principle, community and universal brotherhood. Stoicism teaches us to look at life from the vantage point of the cosmic city, the universal community. The philosopher Marcus Aurelius, himself a Roman emperor, wrote in his meditations, We were born to work together like feet, hands and eyes, like the two rows of teeth, upper and lower. To obstruct each other is unnatural. To feel anger at someone, to turn your back on him, these are obstructions. 
The Stoic tenet of interconnectedness is an extension of their emphasis on rationality and virtue. Just as you work to cultivate virtue within yourself, you're also ethically bound to contribute to the virtue and well-being of your broader community. While Stoicism promotes individual resilience through self-control, emotional management and rational thinking, it also asserts that our individual well-being is intrinsically tied to the well-being of others. Our own resilience is, therefore, multiplied when extended to a collective ethos. If you can help your community navigate through hardship, the community in turn can offer a network of support, resources and collective wisdom when you encounter personal challenges. This does not mean that you should rely solely on external support, but rather it suggests a form of resilience that's both internal and external. A resilient community can act as a safety net and its shared values can be a pillar to lean on during times when even the most stoic individual might waver. Let's look at the examples of great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. who were deeply embedded in their communities. Their personal resilience wasn't just for their own benefit, but served as a lighthouse for entire social movements. Or consider the people in your life who make your existence richer and more meaningful, your close friends, mentors, or even social circles online. Their encouragement, validation, and advice fortify your own mental reserves. How to cultivate community-centric resilience. Engage in mutual aid, from simple gestures like helping a neighbor with groceries to more structured activities like volunteering, Acts of mutual aid bolster community resilience and, by extension, your own. Empathetic listening. Practicing stoic principles like emotional detachment doesn't mean turning a blind eye to others' emotions. Active, empathetic listening helps build strong relationships. Shared philosophical grounding. Establishing a stoic circle or philosophy discussion group in your community can serve as a supportive environment for mutual growth and resilience building. Take a leadership role. Leadership isn't about bossing people around. It's about cultivating a healthy community ethos and making collective decisions for the betterment of everyone involved. This notion of community and universal brotherhood serves as a linchpin that unifies the Stoic philosophy into an inclusive whole. Your resilience, while initiated and nurtured at an individual level, finds its ultimate expression in a collective resilience that uplifts not just you, but also those around you. In the words of Seneca, We are all chained to fortune. The chain of one is made of gold and wide, while that of another is short and rusty. But what difference does it make? The same prison surrounds all of us and even those who have bound others are bound themselves. And it's within this universal prison that we find our commonality, our brotherhood. Understanding that we're all participants in the grand human drama can make us more resilient players, ready not just to act our parts well, but to elevate the entire performance. So let your stoic principles serve as guideposts on your personal path, but also let them light the way for others illuminating a trail that leads us all toward a more resilient, rational, and compassionate world. We've embarked on a remarkable journey through the labyrinth of Stoic philosophy a treasure trove of wisdom dating back to ancient Greece and Rome, yet as applicable today as it ever was. We have meticulously studied seven key principles that serve as pillars of resilience in the Stoic worldview. Understanding what is within your control, cultivating apathy or emotional detachment, valuing virtue above all, accepting impermanence, objective representation, willful endurance, and finally, community and universal brotherhood.
These principles are not mere theories to be idly pondered, but actionable guidelines designed to fortify your mental and emotional defenses against life's trials. They encourage you to adopt a rational approach to emotional challenges, empower you to differentiate between what you can and can't control, and inspire you to embrace adversity as a teacher, rather than a tormentor. At its core, Stoicism teaches you to be the master of your own emotional universe, while also recognizing the value of communal resilience. In the intricate tapestry of life, you're not a lone thread, but part of an interwoven fabric of human experience. By understanding and applying these Stoic principles, you don't just fortify your individual strand, but contribute to the resilience of the whole tapestry. That's the transformational power of Stoicism. It doesn't merely guide you to be better. It encourages you to make the world better by your very presence in it. As we conclude this in-depth exploration, I'd like to extend a heartfelt call to action. Don't let this be an ending point, but rather a commencement. Take what you've learned here and incorporate these principles into the nuances of your daily life. Use the exercises we've discussed as starting points for a daily Stoic practice. And remember, Stoicism is not a destination but a journey, one that requires daily commitment, openness to learning, and a willingness to adapt. So go on, make your daily life a living lab for Stoic principles. Take control where you can, detach where you must, value virtue always, accept life's ebb and flow, see things objectively, endure challenges willingly, and contribute to the collective human experience. Your resilience isn't just a personal asset, it's a gift to the world, a stepping stone to a more rational and compassionate society.